Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Well, this was a pretty recent suggestion. Great suggestion. Never heard of this particular series of encounters. It just happened a few years ago, actually. Um, but it was having to do with a very tragic circumstance uh, that occurred here in the United States. But this is more of a, like an uplifting kind of story. A lot of times I talk about cryptids and monsters and the encounters people have and how frightening and how terrifying some of those are, including some of the ones that I've mentioned in the past that are just truly, truly some scary things to, to, to come across. Here in this case, this cryptid, um, there's only been one encounter it seems, but it happened within a very monumental um, date. Like it was actually something that occurred from a tragedy, but it's very uplifting and, and you'll see what I mean here in a few minutes. It has to do with the tornado that hit Joplin, Missouri back in 2011 and with the encounters that people had, especially the little children, with the cryptids known as the butterfly people. I've never heard of them before, um, so that's why I love um, getting these suggestions because when looking up this information, it's so fascinating to come across what people come, uh, you know, essentially experience sometimes out there in this world. And in this case, it has to do with the horror that this tornado had there in Joplin, Missouri, but of the of the, the very peaceful divine encounters that the children. Um, in particular had with these butterfly people during this tragedy. So here's what happened. Let me give you just a brief history first on this tornado. Um, the 2011 Joplin tornado occurred on May 22, 2011 there in Joplin, Missouri. It was actually an F5 tornado multiple vortex tornado. So there were um, several instances where um, it was probably more than one tornado but it was still classified as one altogether and because it was an F5 we're talking about something that is very very powerful um, in fact when it comes to that kind of scale it's called the Fujita scale F5 is considered the most powerful tornado of all with speeds in excess of 200 miles per hour we're talking about speeds that can essentially strip a land bare. I mean everything from the home, from the uh, complexes in and around neighborhoods, everything. It's almost like a scorched earth type effect and you'll see what I mean with, with this picture here. This damage that this tornado caused, you can clearly see from the satellite picture what it did. I mean it literally created a path of pure destruction very very visible in this particular photo and this tornado was actually about one mile um, at the peak about one mile in width so it was a massive massive tornado in fact it was the largest uh, tornado deadliest tornado to strike the US since about 1947 um, others have surpassed it since then but um, at that point it had not had there wasn't a tornado that wasn't as powerful and as destructive as this one in well over 50 years the damages tied to this tornado too were in several billion dollars over 3,000 I mean we're talking billions of dollars thousands of claims um, in fact it was somewhere around 16,000 plus insurance claims so this was not a tiny little thing no this was something that was massive and very very destructive now keeping all of that in mind, what had happened was shortly after the tornado came and went, um, a curious thing occurred. Um, what should have been, and you'll see again some pictures that you'll see here, what should have been just complete utter destruction of not only the homes but of the people within them, um, some people miraculously survived that experience. And we're talking to the point where it's like scratch your head type uh, miraculous because when it comes to the uh, to the deadliness of, and the destruction of this tornado the fact that some people survived what you're looking at you know through these pictures it's amazing and what what occurred a couple of days later is all of a sudden children started to talk and they started to say 
because um, a couple of days after this, there were some counselors nearby. Um, there was a unit that was set up to try to provide counseling services as well. And they were all talking to the children and the children started to do like a unanimous theme. And being as innocent as they are, they were just, you know, being asked, you know, what happened, what occurred. And then they said, um, oh, yeah, you know, we ran into the butterfly people and that they were uh, the children were claiming that they were these things, whatever they were, that had helped protect them and help save them during this tornado. And there are various stories tied to these encounters, which I'll read some of them here. Very uplifting stuff. So, again, quite a different uh, pace of change when it comes to other stories on the cryptids and monsters that are just, uh, you know, the kind of stuff you never want to run into. But here, um, this is this is very uplifting stuff. For example, um, there was a mother and a daughter, uh, with the daughter being about three or four years old. Um, someone had mentioned that they were um, trying to get to their house as the tornado was coming down across them, but they didn't make it in time. And so instead, the mother and the daughter hit the ground nearby the home just to try to find something in terms of some protection with the mother essentially covering the daughter over like a blanket, making sure that, you know, whatever damage, whatever destruction was going to come their way, at least the mother would take the brunt of it. But then as, as soon as she saw the tornado come across and then a car, her car nonetheless, um, come hurtling towards them, she braced for the impact. But then the mother later said that nothing happened. The tornado simply passed. They were not hurt. Um, no stories as far as like whether they experienced any kind of scratches or bruises or anything like that. But at least they weren't hurt seriously. And the mother left completely astonished. And then what the daughter next said, and again, this is what the mother um, has stated to people as she told her story later on. She said that the daughter said um, after the tornado passed, she asked um, the mother, weren't they pretty? And that's what the daughter asked. And then the mom being confused, she said, what? And then that's when the daughter said, didn't you see them? The butterfly people. And that's when the mother realized that something was essentially create uh, like creating a, a, an aura of protection or something across them to ensure that they were not damaged. Now, if this were the only story, I would kind of leave it like that and think to myself, okay, this is just um, an over... Um, you know, an overactive child, somebody with a good imagination. But no, there were multiple stories tied to children um, encountering butterfly people right during this encounter with the tornado. For example, here's another one. There was a father um, or grandfather and then two young boys. They were trapped uh, also outside during the tornado. Strange, uh, you would think that uh, with with today's technology and with uh, the advanced warnings that people have with tornadoes that there would be something involving um, people being able to get inside or to a better protection but in this case yet again there they were outside as the tornado was bearing down on them in fact the stories go that the winds were so strong from this tornado that the father's shoes like the soles that were on the shoes were actually ripped off but no, nobody was hurt. Uh, the tornado again passed right over them. Nothing occurred to them. And that's when the young boys, who are described as being about three or four years old, uh, also stated that they saw butterfly people hovering around them. Like they told their father that, that they saw these butterfly people right over them and that they, that's how they were protected. Um, there was another story, too, tied to a mother um, in fact, she was also one that came across these butterfly people, um, and, and it's very interesting stuff. Um, it has to do with actually a the daughter of the mother, a, a girl by the name of Emily Huddleston. Um, she experienced this tornado firsthand as well. Um, she was a cheerleader at her school. She was about 14 years old. Um, she said that... Um, they, her and her family, they were driving home when they got caught in the tornado. Um, maybe they tried to outrun it or maybe they tried to get away from it. But whatever occurred, the tornado caught up to them or intercepted them. And it tossed their van, in this case it was a Chevy Suburban, straight into the air. And it landed, crashed right into the ground. Not just a little bit of ways, but it actually did so two blocks away. But nobody... Uh, came out uh, seriously hurt. In fact, the only one that had any kind of injury was that girl herself, Emily Huddleston. She told her mom that uh, she had just a little bit of debris right lo located right in her thigh, but that was about it. 
But here's the curious thing. Um, whenever she went out later on into the area of where her home was, because, again, her home and the area there in the neighborhood pretty much experienced a scorched earth deal with this tornado. Nothing was there. Nothing was left. Um, she went back to there just to reminisce, just to see the after effects. And she was there on a walker because, again, she was recuperating from the damage of that debris that occurred to her thigh. Yeah, but then a peculiar thing happened, um, and around that damage, around the little th whatever that was left from the tornado, a butterfly suddenly landed on her. And it was not only that, but several more landed on her as well. She found it really, really curious, you know, how out of the blue, um, and it's never happening to her before in the past, that butterflies um, never really paid attention to her, and then all of a sudden, they were there, and they started landing directly on her her and anyone who has experienced butterflies and trying to get close to them will realize that butterflies they'll immediately just fly away obviously it's a sense of fight or flight with them with flight definitely being the common theme um, they're just trying to protect themselves they'll fly away at the slightest inclination of anything approaching them but in this case, um, these butterflies just decided to land on her, and that's when later on when she heard the stories of some of the younger kids and the butterfly people, then she thought to herself that in some ways things made sense, that maybe they were protected in their Chevy Suburban, despite the fact that, again, it was tossed straight into the air, twirled in the tornado, landed two blocks away, but they uh, came, uh, came out relatively unscathed. The fact that that still occurred um, could be because of the butterfly people and the stories that those children were talking about. Um, another one, and this is probably one of the best ones, has to do with a family who had four children. There was the mother, there was the four children, the tornado came across their home. This time they were hiding in the home and it directly hit the home right there right 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 where they were hiding in fact they had a mattress above them they were all huddled underneath that mattress um, as a way of trying to protect themselves no can do this tornado tore their home open um, they heard windows breaking the house blew open they were all thrown outside in fact the mother described um, the way that they all huddled with the mattress and the way the house was blown open that whenever they flew out with the mattress it was almost like they were riding the mattress like a water slide straight through the tornado um, but they all landed um, not unscathed I mean they, they had some damages but they all still lived and they were all still alive uh, but the only one that was unaccounted for was one of the youngest children by the name of Eli they couldn't find him um, whatever happened within the tornado uh, when the house blew open I mean uh, they were all were able to stick together in that mattress except for this little kid Eli and, but they did find them, actually, a couple minutes later, once the tornado passed and once they were able to uh, try to catch themselves up and see, you know, who's around, who's alive, um, they found him. They found Eli, um, uh, despite the savagery of this tornado and the idea, again, of being stuck in something like this, Eli was safely wrapped inside a carpet. And here's the curious part. This carpet was not theirs. Like, it was not... Uh, carpet at all. Um, it was a green carpet. They did not own a green carpet. And the way the carpet was encountered with Eli, it was wrapped around him, as the mother described it, like a burrito. Um, like safely, 100% wrapped around him like a, like a, like a cocoon of sorts. Um, so that way, when Eli was sucked out of the home with the family uh, through the tornado, um, the minute that occurred, for whatever reason, this carpet suddenly flew straight at Eli, wrapped himself around him, and then that way when he landed, he was relatively unscathed. Like there was nothing that damaged him uh, when something could have seriously, seriously hurt him because, again, he didn't have the protection of the mattress like the family had uh, whenever they themselves went out, that, went out their home. No, in this case, Eli was by himself through those brief few dangerous seconds. But no, this carpet wrapped itself around him. Um, it landed um, with, he, uh, with the carpet and him together, and he was safely away. In fact, he was found about 20 feet away from the family. And again, it was relatively unscathed. Crazy, crazy stuff. Um, and in fact, Eli said that he saw a man with brown hair inside the carpet. He didn't necessarily describe anything as far as um, 
uh, like butterfly people, but he nevertheless still described that there was something or someone there with him inside the carpet um, during this these few dangerous seconds. Nothing in terms of this man being found afterward uh, when the family found Eli 20 feet away, but at least for the way Eli described it, he found you know something in terms of a man there uh, with him. And then, um, again, this could be tied to the notion of the butterfly people. But that was it. Th those are the encounters um, with the, uh, the children and the, what they had with the butterfly people. This has been the only instance, it seems, of anybody encountering these particular cryptids, these entities, these beings, whatever they are. But it's clear to see that they are not entities that are causing damages or causing anything in terms of harm and, and it. In fact, it's the complete opposite. They're there. They saw this, whatever what was occurring there in uh, Joplin, this damage, this destruction. They saw this from afar, and they decided to intercept and try to offer as much protection as possible. Uh, very uplifting story, again, when you realize the amount of destruction that this tornado had. I mean, look, I was looking at those pictures, and you've seen them here. Um, it, it, what I've shown is just a microcosm of of the true damage that this thing had, but in the, in the, throughout all of this, it's very bizarre, very strange, but again, very uplifting to hear that there was these butterfly people and what they did to help protect um, some of the children that, that were in these... Um, the the tornado's damaging effects. Um, what the city decided to do, by the way, to kind of uh, memorialize and to try to create a remembering after effect of the tornado damage, they decided to create a mural. And some of the people suggested, actually, to try to put something in terms of the butterfly people. Uh, it didn't really fly too much with the city council because they didn't want to necessarily go into that realm where all of a sudden in their uh, perspective they're putting something in terms of, of of strange entities right there on a city mural instead there was a compromise of sorts where and in terms of again making things uplifting they placed butterflies throughout that mural which you're looking at a picture of here the artist stated that it has nothing really to do with the butterfly people but again it seems too much of a coincidence so I think something did uh, get placed in terms of butterflies there to try to tie in to the notion of the butterfly people but again it, it's very uplifting a uh, very nice story to hear uh, with regards to this um, whatever this these cryptids are whatever these entities are um, and what occurred there in Joplin Missouri um, with regards to these these things the and the nice actions that they did if anyone has any other stories tied to the butterfly people any other places that they might have been found um, please post your comments share them below It'd be fascinating to see if, if there's other tragedies that these uh, butterfly people have been able to uh, fly into or peer into to try to make sure that um, they help and rescue and essentially be the good beings that they seem to be. So if anyone has any such stories like that, please, it'd be fascinating to see and hear them as well. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care.